Hey everybody. So animated textures, uh, something that came up in class the other day and somebody wanted to know how would they apply animated textures to their geometry. Say if you were um, uh, creating a TV screen and you wanted to have like a cartoon, whether it would be hand drawn or some silly thing you did with uh, 3D um, and you render out a sequence and you wanted to apply that to geometry so it would play. Uh, it could be something like a a uh, sci-fi machine with some crazy electronic uh, stuff going on. Um, anything, what you wanted to do. So uh, I figured I'd set it up for you. First, actually create an animated sequence and then show you how to map it. And a couple of the odd things that show up at the end, even once you have your animated sequence. So uh, to start off, what I did was um, I just have a um, torus that goes around and around. It's actually only going around for 24 frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my setting frame settings back down to not 24 but 23 uh, because I don't want it to get back to frame 1 because it'll just stick there so I'm just looking at 23 frames of it that way it rotates perfectly okay and I have my rendering settings okay I'm gonna call my sequence spin uh, if you've not been in here before and you probably have but uh, we'll take a quick tour image format, you can pick whatever format you like in here, this could be PNGs, PSDs, JPEGs, in my case targets are going to work fine. You need to pick a frame and animation extension. By default, Maya is going to want to call it a single frame extension. And the downside of this is, if you look at your frame range settings down here, they're all grayed out, because these are actually single frame render options, okay? So if you want to animate a sequence, you're going to need to pick one of these settings down here. And in my case, just for convenience, I'm going to pick name, uh, frame number, and then extension. So in that case, you actually see what your output is up here. Uh, this is going to render this out to spin.001.tga and through 23. The zeros that I'm getting here are because I've chosen frame padding. Now this can either be off altogether, and you get spin.1 uh, through spin.23. Uh, or you can set to one zero in there, or two zeros in there. If I can get it to move, three zeros in there. It, frame padding of three is fine. This actually just helps some programs that take image sequences like After Effects uh, make sense of the order of your imagery. Okay, so you might want to just put frame padding in there. Uh, then at this point, I can pick a frame range. And in my case, I'm picking one through 23, every frame. So if I wanted to render by twos, I'd put a two in there. I'm rendering from the perspective window, that's pretty straightforward. Um, whether to render with alpha, whether or not. And I, I just set mine as custom as far as my image size and a 512 by 512. So I'm just applying it to a square plane, okay? So all of this is fine, so we can leave that alone. And then the only thing we need to do to worry about to go into rendering is go into the rendering option, go to the render menu, down here you'll see batch render, and this is how in Maya you render out your image sequences. All right, so we're just going to tap that. As usual, it'll tell you to save. And if you watch down here in this feedback line, it will tell you that it's rendering out the sequence. All right, and that was pretty quick. And if we go now to my directory, this is my project. And I did set this up as a Maya project, so it would render to somewhere that I could uh, keep track of. And when Maya renders out images, when you do have a project set, it will render them to the images directory. And you can change that, of course, but th this is by default, so it's handy enough. So there you go, frames 001 through 0023. Okay, so now my Taurus, or Donut, has done its job. Next up, I have a plane. No animation on it, just a straight plane. And what we're going to do is hopefully map that image sequence to it. So I'm going to go down here and create a new Lambert. All right. And this will be a Lambert 3. And what we'll do is go in and we'll apply a file. And go to the image name. Right now, I just did this before. That's why it came to images. Normally, in a project, as you know, it would search source images first. So all you need to do then is just go up to your main project and in this case I'm applying spin to it. So I'm going to select the first image and click open and there you go. It's now mapped to my sphere. Uh, but this is only 
that first image. Okay, so I can drag along here, and as you can see, um, Maya doesn't know that there's an image sequence yet. We have to actually tell it. So over here in the file attributes, we actually have a setting that says use image sequence, which is kind of cool. And there you go. So uh, now, as we move along, you can see that we actually get the image sequence to rotate around exactly as we would expect. And you uh, are probably going, this is very handy. It's good. And it is. But there are several caveats, and that's what I'd like to show you right now. So let's go back to frame one for a second. Now let's take the frame slider, drag it out, so we got 48 images here, okay? And what I'd like to show you is this. Okay. What's happening is, after frame 23, we've run out of images. Maya has no idea what to do anymore. So if we back up, you can see two Frame 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23, we're fine. At frame 24, it's if you look at the image number over here, it's actually looking for image number 24. And there is no image number 24. So it's a little bit confused as to what to do. Okay? So what we have to do, and there's two ways to get there, is the simplest one is in the attribute editor over here in this little purple window, we can right click and say, Edit Expression, okay? What we'll do is we'll select up here and make sure that we're at Edit uh, or uh, Filter by Expression Names, and assuming you're only using one expression at this point or one image sequence, there should only be one of these. There could be more, but uh, in our case, there is only one. Uh, and here is the actual expression, that the file to play, file one dot frame extension equals the frame. So that's basically telling it, whichever frame we're playing, play that as the actual file that we're playing. So, frame, you know, image number 23 should be the file one dot frame extension 23, okay? Uh, so what we're going to tell Maya to do is, and it's just a little bit of an addition to the end here, is we're going to say uh, percent sign 23. Okay, which is the number of frames that we have. All right, and then we're just gonna tap the edit button. Okay, let's move this off to the side for a second and check out our work. Well, it's better than it was, but we're not there yet. Let me show you why and what is actually causing our problem now. As before, we were doing fine, 18, 19, 20, 21, to 22. At frame 22 now, because we're looping, it's looking to play frame 22. At frame 23, it is now looking to play frame or image number zero. Maya, when we are looping, assumes that we're starting with image number 000, not 001. In our case, that's what we rendered out. So Maya thinks we're going from um, 0 to 22, not 1 to 23. So that's why we're getting this glitch. And then we go to frame 24, and we're back to 1, which is what works. So at frame 23, it thinks it's looking for an image named 0, which is not what we have. There's a simple fix for this. Well, let's bring back our editor. Okay. So we have 23 frames. All we need to do is tell Maya that we're starting not at zero, but at one. And we do that by adding a plus and adding a one right there at the end. So what we've added to this um, uh, uh, image sequence expression is percent sign 23, telling it how many frames are in the sequence, and that our image sequence begins at one, not zero. Tap edit again. And now we can close this. And when we play this out now, it loops like a dream. Okay? If you had 95 images, um, that would be percent sign 95. If your images started at 1 through 95, as opposed to 0 through 94, you would just add a plus 1 at the end, and you'd be good to go. Alrighty? Hopefully that was helpful. Take care, guys.